You are listening to The Real Men Feel Show with your hosts, Andy Grant and Apio Hunter. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having. But you don't need to be a man to join us. The Real Men Feel Show is produced live each Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern for your growth and enjoyment. Listen to us on podcast platforms including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. You can also watch the show on YouTube by visiting realmenfeel.org slash YouTube. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe on iTunes by visiting realmenfeel.org slash iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at realmenfeel.org and on Facebook, facebook.com slash realmenfeelshow. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Show your support for Real Men Feel by shopping at realmenfeel.org slash swag by visiting digitaltipjar.com slash realmenfeel, or even text us a tip. You can show some love for Real Men Feel by texting Real Men Feel, that's all one word, to 504-226-5306. You'll receive a link back to complete your tip and choose the amount. This is a weekly program, and your reviews, comments, feedback, and participation are welcome during the live show and anytime in our Facebook group, on Twitter, or at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's dive into this week's show. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is Andy Gray. Your... Wait, what? What did I call myself? <laughs> like, <laughs> I could just introduce the Grinch or something. I'm, uh, I'm Andy Grant, <laughs> host of well, Real Men Feel. I am. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. Now I'm, I'm now I'm. We're starting completely off track. This is wonderful. <laughs> My kind of podcast for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> we well, always have fun. Yeah, here here to get me back on track is <laughs> Apio Hunter. <laughs> that or I will get you further off track. You know me. You know once once a squirrel goes by, I'm after it. <laughs> uh, so tonight I'm really uh, I'm really thrilled and happy to have our our guest tonight. Uh, fulfillment coach and speaker Sean Patrick Mayer. Um, so, Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And what what excites me uh, about having you here, but beyond the topic of celebrating masculine power, um, is is the our first interaction, which was uh, you were you were originally scheduled to be on this this very program last June, mm-hmm. and with two hours before showtime, I. Uh, very personally <laughs> messaged you saying eh, show's not happening um and i don't let's see what did i actually say i've called it up to to be succinct here and i said yeah i'm sorry i need to cancel tonight's show apologize for the no notice once we're rolling again i'll reach out to you um and you you asked immediately uh, well, was you saying the whole podcast is on hold and and i said we were planning a three break which we were so you were the last mm-hmm. show before a planned break mm-hmm. which i don't think i the world didn't know that just we knew it Right. Um, but uh, I put, I said, but my life is insisting the break starts now. So, so anyone following the show l- last year or listening to me talk any time in the last year knows that last summer was a really rough time for me. Mm-hmm. So uh, I do know that was the week we were rushing to clear the clutter from our house. We were rushing to put our house on the market. Uh, from June 5th, a realtor came here. We said we would have our house on the market by June 20th. And that was the week of just like cleaning and rummaging and, and I didn't want to sell the house. So it was doing all these things mm-hmm. we had to do, doing none of these things that we wanted to do. Um, so I was emotional. I was a mess. I was depressed. I was like, I, I, I need the break to start now. Now I didn't tell you any of that. I was just like, <laughs> we're done. Um, so a week or so later, maybe close to two weeks, you, you sent me a message and I'm just going to read this. Hey, Andy, I have noticed that when I think of what happened with our plans for the podcast, I feel a tinge of frustration and confusion. I had planned my travels around that event, and the last-minute change left me feeling some sadness and anger. I felt disregarded without any concern or true explanation, and I would like to clear that up with you. Are you willing to share with me what happened that day and let me know your plans moving forward for making up the show? I appreciate you may have encountered a situation that was beyond your control, and I feel like a little communication between us may dissolve some of the feelings that are lingering in me. Thank you. I freaking loved that. 
I, I thought that was amazing. I thought that was such a, a, a man in power. Um, ah. hmm. I, it was neat to see. It, it felt to me that you were assuming you were the cause of, of the break of, of you had done something wrong. So we canceled hmm. on you. Well, that's mm. what it felt to me, that, that assumption, and that, that's another assumption on my part. So it was neat to see all these assumptions playing out. Mm -hmm. um, but but I, I wrote back and just said, no, I've been struggling with depression. This had nothing to do with you. This is a, a completely George Costanza, it's not you, it's me, breakup. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I promised that as, as soon as the show's rolling again, we, we would have you on. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why once we were rolling again, uh, good God, it to be six months later, I reached out and said, we're rolling again and I'd love to have you on and I wanted to share this experience. And, and so with that big introduction, do, do you recall, uh, you know, is, is, is kind of my believing that you took it personally is, is, was that in play? I think what was, what was happening, what's interesting is your, uh, your um, kind of judgment assumption about it being about me. That's a old program that runs, in the underbelly of my whole world that I've done a lot of work on within myself. When I think back, however, to that space, I don't think I actually felt like it was about me. Um, I think what was just happening is, is kind of what I said. I, I felt just disrespected or disre disregarded, you know, mm -hmm. um, to be, to have that happen within a, a few minutes of the show and not to have the, you know, kind of all the things I said to not have any explanation. Um, I think the assumption I was making was you were just like feeling like, a, you know, having a bad day and just decided to cancel. And there was like no real depth to it, you know? And that's why I wanted to check in. I was like, what was happening here that had this person, um, you know, need to cancel so soon before the thing. And, and it, I was really glad that I did because you did come back and tell me that you were having all this struggle and it was a really challenging time for you. And it, it, it I think, getting an opportunity to see into your world a little bit and to get down into the roots of why you would do this, why that had to happen for you, just allowed me to alleviate any more judgments that I would have for you than uh, about me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and again, that's what I loved about it. Um, again, we had, we've, we've never met. We had had a mm -hmm. 10 minute chat to see if you right. would be a good fit for the show and, yeah. You know, you decided yes, and then you probably decided, well, guess not, and, you know, yeah. <laughs> screw you guys, I'm well, out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I really, even witnessing it and being a part of it, I, I felt it was a beautiful example of masculinity, owning power, feeling, asking about feelings c to confirm, I'm, this is how I'm feeling. Does this make sense? Are you, you know, is the, mm -hmm. do you, do you, uh, not even, not permission. You no, know, but but checking an honest checking in, mm -hmm. how, how, instead of a, how you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. No, like, this is like, how are you really doing? Here's right. how I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. so, again, so the um, it, it touched me. I you know I don't I can't remember. I couldn't tell you what other message I had last June, but right. <laughs> that, was, that that interaction stuck with me, and mm -hmm. so that's why I'm uh, beyond being glad that that I feel good again and that the show is going on again. Uh, mm -hmm. I, again, I'm just really happy that that we could get our schedules aligned and have yeah. you on here, and that it wasn't, uh, you know, you didn't play hard to get. It right? wasn't bad no. blood or anything. No, not at all. Not at all. I appreciate uh, how you showed up in that entire thing, Andy. And of course, like you said, when when you did start the show right up, I immediately got a message from you. You know, so you you completely owned your word there as well. So I feel great, and I'm really glad to be here. And yeah, glad it was like this whole process. Six months, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now the pressure is on for the most amazing show ever. Got to be so good. <laughs> so you know, cool. I so have to actually just jump in here really quick and say one of the things that really impressed me as I was listening to to the message and and, and the exchange that you that you guys shared. What really impressed me was not just the fact of owning your you no know, your masculinity and your power, but also there is that authenticity. And that was living in integrity, full and complete integrity with yourself and with Andy. And, and that to me is you know, such a critical part of, of being a complete and whole person as well. So that, that really you know, struck me and impressed me as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you know, you're here with us finally. Me too. Yeah. So, so again, the, the jumping point is, is 
celebrating masculine power and at a time when it when it feels like masculinity is under attack uh, i mean a lot of guys are living feeling that way and you know we, we just had the women's marches for the the sec well i don't know it's the second year that i'm aware of women's mm -hmm. marches i don't know how long they've actually been going on but they're finally getting attention uh the me too the time's up um so many men um you know they, they have the the excuses and the dramas like i don't know how to flirt anymore how do i date anymore everything gets me in trouble there's no right way to be a guy and all mm -hmm. this sort of stuff so i, I love that that you want to talk about you know celebrating masculinity and, and what does that mean and because i do believe that good men owning their power is a positive thing for everybody and you're you're, you're both examples of that so, so Sean Patrick, how might you start off by defining what you mean by, by masculine power even? You know, what's, what's interesting, I notice what comes up for me when I hear you even give the intro about it is, is I'm actually in touch with that fear uh, in my, within myself, the fear of showing up in my full uh, masculine energy, my manness, because at a time when there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of guilt around how some men have been showing up and of course kind of lending itself to this perception that we have been perpetuating for some time now for at least decades if not you know centuries around men being these dominant figures who are uh kind of out to um dominate everyone else and kind of use that as a power structure to make their life better and to hell with everybody else right and what i've been noticing of late is it's it's scary it's really scary to step out and say well I'm still proud to be a man I'm still owning that I'm here and I love being a man and, and in fact me being more of a strong and empowered man is the change that is the um, that's the response to the me too that's the antidote to us even having to have these kind of movements Right when more men are showing up in their masculine power, and, and masculine is, is a funny word to use here too, because of course masculine and feminine energy exists in all humans, right? We all have these energetics in us. But in this case, I think what we're using that terminology to mean is also the masculine as expressed in men. And uh, for us to show up more in that, um, to, to claim a boundary, to uh, defend, to hold the container, not only for um, us defending and protecting all those who need protecting and defending, but also holding the container for the pain that's also coming out through this Me Too campaign. Because that's really what we're seeing right now is this, this initial release of all the resentment, pain, anger, all these things that need to be moved in order for us to eventually move towards more healing and compassion and moving into that space. So, us holding our masculine power to me is about being grounded, being heart centered and being connected to all of the parts of myself to celebrating that this, that if that in the face of this challenge for me to hold a grounded heart centered space in my masculine power is the greatest gift that I can give to the world in the times of this, of this type of turmoil. That's beautiful. And, and from my heart, very true, right? I, it's, it's a distortion of masculinity and masculine energy to think that men are only domineering and the patriarchy and, and the, like that. That's an aspect of masculine energy. Um, as I said, it's a distorted one. It, it's kind of like men on one foot tilted as opposed to being grounded and present. Right, exactly. exactly. So, you know, Oh no, that, that that you know reminded me of an analogy that I like to use sometimes, which is when a pendulum is held in a particular space, you know, in a particular spot, without allowed allowed to you know swing and balance itself. And, you know, when it's held for too long, what happens is that when it's finally released, it oftentimes will swing to an opposite extreme initially. Mm -hmm. And then as it corrects itself, you know, the, 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 the swings beget less and less and less, and then finally it reaches that center. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're seeing is we saw that extreme swing, and now we're starting to see it correct itself. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, uh, the 
concern is the overcorrection, right? right. Um, which mm -hmm. I can attest to in my own life where um, I had a, my, I love my father. I always preface this conversation with, I love my dad. Um, and he taught me a lot of the ways that are the masculine energy that I don't choose to embody. Um, and in doing so, I rebelled against the masculine energy within myself. And I went way over into the feminine side, right? Which was a really beautiful exploration for me. And yet it was an unhealthy imbalance within myself. I was actually shunning this masculine energy that I have, uh, because I was afraid of it because I thought that was bad and wrong. And so I went out, just like you said, the other swing of the pendulum and then coming back and like, you know, my, my hope for this whole thing is that maybe we don't have to swing so far out into the extremes and do that multiple times before we find that center point. Like maybe it can just go a little past and come back. Um, and yet physics and the nature and mechanics of consciousness in the universe might dictate that it has to happen the way a pendulum swings. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And, and what do you have a, a feeling of a vision of what that, that, that settled point feels or looks like for, for masculinity. Oh, it's so funny when you, when you asked that, I, I actually started thinking of, um, I started thinking of polarities, healthy polarities and that, uh, there's actually a need for us to be able to celebrate the entire spectrum. And it, it, at least in my opinion, in my opinion, there is, um, a man that can be solid and grounded and heart centered. And I think that's really the key, like for, for all the work that I've done in my world, it's, it's being more in our hearts. That's the place where we can hold all of our energy. And I, I always say this with my clients. It's like, let our hearts be the liaison for everything entering and exiting our field. So anybody that's speaking to us, let their words come through our hearts. Like let us hear through, through the lens of compassion. And everything that we're expressing, let it come through compassion as well, right? But that doesn't mean that we have to be soft. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be soft and gentle. Um, masculine power actually does have like a, a grounded, strong barrier boundary energy to it. And yet we can do that in a compassionate way. So I'm not really fully sure what it looks like when we're right dead smack in the middle there. Um, and I don't want to project the idea that we're supposed to be a certain way as men because right. we're still want to be able to celebrate the fact that there are men that are naturally super masculine, you know, and mm -hmm. there are men that are more feminine and mm -hmm. neither of those are right or wrong or good or bad or anything. Yeah. We, we actually come to this place where we can actually celebrate the differences. And that's what I actually am hoping for in terms of our, our greater community and the environment, the social environment, is that we celebrate the differences. Like we're equal but different. You know what I mean? Not that we're all the same. Yeah. The, uh, you know, the pendulum metaphor comes to be still at some point. Mm -hmm. But again, mm -hmm. society and human beings and consciousness is not ever still or <laughs> yeah. done. But right. so, so more, it's a, it, and this is a metaphor I've heard many times about harmony. And harmony is in constant flux. The orchestra, every instrument, different different tempos, different crescendos, different sections are louder at one point, but mm -hmm. altogether, it seemed like this one new solid, enjoyable thing. Mm -hmm. So again, maybe at, at our peak point, I'll call it, mm -hmm. um, again, a, a, a feminine leaning man and a warrior, hardcore, tough guy man mm -hmm. are just seen as men. Right. There, there aren't the labels and the picking apart and, how much, yeah, what percent are you manliness versus femininity today? And it's just, <laughs> yeah. no, it's just like, we don't even notice yeah. that, right? Yeah, we're just humans. We're just Imagine all humans. That. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and, I and I love that expression of, you know, we're, we're, you know, together and yet at the same time individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that resonates so much with, with how I try to live my own life, which is, okay, let go of the judgments, let go of the labels, and see that we are all connected. We, are all, we all form one great, beautiful human family, and that we each have our unique individual expressions Mm -hmm. The infinite expression of that oneness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So, Sean Patrick, um, are, are there techniques or tools that, that you share with people about how a man can get more 
in their in their hearts as opposed to their heads? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my favorite tools actually come from uh, the HeartMath Institute, hmm. um, and they do amazing work, science backed, evidence based work, which often men love. <laughs> 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 um, to, to show that it actually, the, the physiological, the psychological, um, benefits of being more in our hearts of actually allowing our minds to be in our hearts. So my favorite practices are those. Um, and it's amazing. It's amazing how simple it is. In fact, it's, it's so simple that for a long time I was like, this can't be it. Like I can't base my whole work on something that's as simple as taking a breath and feeling my heart. Right. Uh, it's got to be something like brain surgery or something so complex. Yeah. And yet the further I get away from that simple foundation, uh, even in my own life, the more challenging my life becomes, the more not aligned, the something doesn't feel right. The simplest act of placing my hand on my heart and just breathing down into that space and allowing myself to drop in. And what I've actually found is that my heart is actually the gateway to my whole body. So the moment I feel my heart, I begin to feel my limbs, I begin to feel my organs, and my whole form takes, takes shape within me. And from that place, everything settles a little more, and everything becomes a little more clear. The mass amount of my fears or doubts that roll around in my head just settle. They just settle by the wayside because I'm simply taking the time to drop out of this place and more into this place. Yeah. I always find that that insistence on it's got to be complicated and difficult just just proves that you're we're in our heads. Right. Exactly. Cause, cause <laughs> the, the, our brain is looking for an excuse for why haven't we changed? Well, because it's hard and complicated and oh no, I just go somewhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. Take a vacation brain. I'm going to go to my heart and right. learn how to feel and live and be grounded. Exactly. Right. I, like Apio, did you like as you just did the exercise for you and just touch your heart? Yeah. I mm -hmm. felt more grounded. I did too. I, I absolutely felt that immediately. And I, I've heard of the Heart Math Institute. I've even looked at some of their, their work in the past. And one of the things that really struck out, you know, that struck me was the fact that the heart quite literally has its own energy source, if you will, which mm -hmm. is, you know, the heart starts beating before the brain is even developed. Right. Which I thought, you know, is, 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 is fascinating to think that when we center and, and that kind of goes to the, you know, up here is where the ego is. You know, here is where the authenticity and mm. everything else reside. Well, and I like we, that. There first, that gets out of the way. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 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 I, I, like, I like that frame. Yeah. I remember reading some heart math articles years ago and just some of their studies saying that you know, we've been taught wrong and the brain doesn't control it. It is, the heart is more in control of the entire body and nervous mm -hmm. system, everything than the brain. The brain is a specialized organ for thinking. Yeah. But the heart really is running more of the show, um, especially when we let it to and settle into our heart to become aware of it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I, one, of the, one of the most amazing things that I read was there's actually more neurons running from the heart to the brain than the brain to the heart. And that, mm. that in and of itself is like, oh, the heart is, is the center point. The heart is the thing that's running the show. Yeah. You know, that's actually the thing that's dictating our, our experience. Yeah, and, and, and maybe it's Hallmark's fault, <laughs> but the heart gotta has be. gotten, uh, you know, society, it's, it's a weak thing. It's a feminine thing. And it, right. well, if we could just get a little marketing for the heart and that it's, you know, it's the toughest, hardest organ and it's, you know, maybe it's the manliest. Strongest organ. muscle you got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and without it, the Hallmark trademark. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and it's true. The heart stops pumping. Guess what? The brain is not going to survive for very long at all. Exactly. None of yeah. the rest, our entire body, is not going to survive for very long once the heart stops. Yeah, so, yeah. And it's and it's it is interesting how we've kind of um, uh, placed value on um, avoiding emotion, right? Mm -hmm. If I can stoically independently move through the things that i'm feeling and just pretend like i'm not hurting that's what we've actually associated as a culture with power or you know masculinity and what i actually started to find is that the more i was dipping into my heart part of that is actually having to face those, the, the the sadness 
you know, the, the, the pain that's in there. There's, there was a lot of grief there when I really started to dip into that place. And I realized, oh, that's actually part of the reason why I avoided it so strongly because it was scary and it was really going to be challenging to really let myself go in there. But what the amazing result of that was the more I did that, the more I was actually in touch with more of who I was. And instead of running on like a half, half crew or something, the ship was, was feeling like I had a full crew for my ship. And I was able to actually access much more of my power because I was willing to dip into those places. So to me, the power actually comes from that place because we're not posturing to try to prove anything. I'm perfectly willing to say that I'm scared in this moment or whatever the case may be. And in doing so, I'm accessing more of myself, which means I have access to more power, you know, in effect. Yeah. Them, I mean, authenticity has been mentioned multiple times already. And it's really as, as if that's the fuel of our personal power. The more authentic mm -hmm. you're willing to feel and be and act, the more you can do, the more alive you feel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. We fixed everything. Bam. <laughs> Done. <laughs> he said it was complicated. <laughs> not, not my brain. <laughs> nope. Shut that bitch <laughs> <Not> up. <at> <laughs> you know, um, when I first, I work as an energy coach, meaning I, can, I tune into people and I, I have visualizations of the energy around them. And when I was first going through my training, um, uh, a woman in the program asked me to do a session with her husband. And uh, I did, and I'm looking at him and I just, I saw all these just bricks, bricks, bricks all around his heart. And I said, oh, I see walls of bricks literally around your heart. And he starts cracking up. I'm like, why, why is this so funny to you? He's like, I'm a bricklayer. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, has, but I'm like, well, you need to take those bricks down and let your, let your true feelings be shared with people. He's like, no way. Like, he, like, I'm a man. I, of course I've got a walled up heart. That's what I'm supposed to be. He just like, no, he didn't. He could recognize it, could feel it. And like, no, I'm supposed to be walled up because <laughs> I'm a man. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it was, so, it was so powerful to see that and confront someone and go, no, I'm, this is the right way to be a man. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So everything you've described in your own personal realizations, Sean Patrick, it, it takes a lot of awareness. So, so how, huh? How can you help the unaware <laughs> become more aware? Hmm. Hmm. It's a really challenging question to answer. Hmm. It's almost like um, I know that my work here, you know, what comes up is like, I want to be able to help everybody. It's like, I want every man to get, this and to be able to feel this. And yet I'm also not willing to spend a lot of time with people that don't have a desire, like to step into that space. That's not the role that I fill. That's not, you know, there, there's a lot of people doing a lot of great work in the world. And some of them toe that line of like, I'm bringing people from the other side to this side, right? I actually have a buddy who I just spoke to the other day. That's his like genius spot. He's in the corporate world and he's got, he's this amazing man and he's, you know, creating that bridge, right? Well, my work isn't quite at that bridge. My work is a little bit further down, uh, down the river, so to speak, when people are already becoming more available of this. They're recognizing that they have a desire to open up into something. Um, most of the time, they've at least had one experience, most of them multiple experiences of dipping down into something in their hearts and it blowing them open. They have some vision for some uh, massive social impact that they want to have in the world or you know, wanting to deepen a relationship or get more, um, you know, have more friendship in their lives, right? There's, there's something missing, right? They recognize that what we were taught to do only got them so far. And when they got there, it didn't feel that great. Mm -hmm. So they usually have some desire, like there's some pain point or some need or some recognition that that part already exists. Um, and then we just start dipping into there. You know, when they come to me, we just start climbing in there. So is it, is it to, to use, uh, I'll call it a cliche from, from Alcoholics mm -hmm. Anonymous of someone has to hit rock bottom to have an awareness that this is, I don't want to feel worse than this or I can do better than this or. Or, or they hit an ecstatic point, you know, they have an ext ecstatic moment. You know, a lot of people have a lot of friends that go to Burning Man and stuff and almost all of them have a, well, there was this one time at Burning Man story. 
And usually it's about them having this ecstatic heart opening activation moment where they had this experience and it just blasted their heart open. Right. So those are the other opportunities. Of course, hitting rock bottom, uh, that can basically be like, okay, I can't go that far anymore. I have to come back and find healing. Um, which is more to me, that's more of like therapy. Once, once, you know, a therapist's job is, is really in there when somebody's at that, at that point. But on the other hand of it, when they're like, have this blast open and they're like, <clears throat> I have no idea what the hell that was. Like this thing happened to me and now I feel different, but I'm confused because I don't fit into this other space. And I had this vision for creating this thing and I have no idea what that thing is or how to do that. You know, that's, that's when people show up for me. Cool. So, it's kind of, you're, so you're attracting and dealing with kind of the, uh, the spontaneous eruption of, of awareness and <sighs> desires. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes that's the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's always that point of desire that's there for you to be able to then help them through that and help them make sense of that desire. Right? <clears throat> yeah. So and you. yeah, you know, and what's interesting is like most of the people that I support now, they're creating something. They have some, like, they are mostly men, not all men actually at this point, but, but mostly men. And they've had some opening in their heart where they want to like create something in the world that, that supports others to have either the same experience or, you know, they want to do something that impacts the world in a positive way. And this is kind of coming back to this whole thing that we're talking about to the masculine power and men being in their hearts. It's like what I've noticed is that when we can activate our hearts and come into a place where I have this vision, I want to support these people in this way, right? Well, it takes some like forward, you know, penetrating energy to actually create that in the world, right? It takes a masculine motion, um, masculine and feminine together, which creates life um, mm -hmm. to actually bring that forward into the world. And that's actually who I tend to serve the most now is people that have some vision or a sense that they want to do something. And mm -hmm. that's where we start. And that's actually the piece that we use as the resistance point, so to speak, for all this heart exploration and for them unraveling the fears or the limiting belief stories that they may carry with them. This, this vision that they hold is our resistance point that they're leaning up against so that those things emerge and we get to work with them. Hmm. Now, you, you use the penetrating term. Um, so uh, yeah, often I've heard masculine energy described as the, the active, uh, the penetrator, the, the forging ahead and, and feminine energy is more receptive and, and is the true creation energy. Cause so you can, I'm sure like I've experienced in my life, I'm, geez, I'm taking lots of action, but I'm not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of almost pure masculine, you know, a, like I think of a dog chasing their own tail, just I'm doing a lot, but I'm not getting anywhere. Um, and there needs to be some of that receptivity that the, the feminine energy allows a, any, any man with a vision and a plan to receive help, mm -hmm. right? To, to not feel I must do it all alone. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the egg of an idea and I'll fertilize it myself and it'll crack open and <laughs> run around and bring to life. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen, I've, tr I've tried to do that. <laughs> and, and it's, it's very hard. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> But uh, I actually saw an article today um, called You've Got a Goddess Inside of You. And it's talking about the same things that we're talking about. But like, wow, there is a really – that's going to scare away a lot of walled-off men. They're never, they're mm -hmm. gonna, I, I don't have a goddess inside of me. right? So there's all different kind of levels of, of receptivity mm -hmm. to uh, the fact that you have feminine energy as a man and that you're, the, your allowance to recognize it, express it, and deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what was more, could you share more of your personal journey in, in discovering your best uh, balance and use of both of these energies? Sure, sure, yeah. So as I said earlier, I, you know, I had my father, and he was very masculine in the, in the kind of uh, traditional sense, so to speak, tough, strong, taught me a lot of great qualities in terms of integrity and uh, work ethic things like that, you know, that's, that was his, you know, my dad comes from the thing that it's all about providing, you know, that's, that's the thing that you do at, at the expense of all other things, like mm -hmm. make sure that the food is on the table and that's what you're doing. That's your job as a man, take care of your family. Um, so don't be a good husband. Don't be emotionally available. 
not don't be those things, but it just wasn't spoken about, you know, like those things don't matter, just provide. So um, through my process of growing, I started to see the negative parts to that. I started to see how that impacted my mother and our family. And so my rebellion, I went super into what I lovingly call the woo woo and really into like the spirit, the flow, everything's in flow and I'm just flowing with everything. Right. And it was beautiful. It was magical. It was incredible. It was, it was an absolutely beautiful and important piece for me to get and to be in for years. I spent years in that place and I'll never forget the conversation I had. I was a touring musician at the time. We had just gotten home from uh, one of our tours and my drummer was getting ready to purchase a sound system to create a live, uh, a live production business, right? This is what he wanted to do. He had a dream. He wants to do it. And so he's telling me all about it. He's super excited. And he goes, so what are you going to do now that we're home? And I was like, well, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm going to kind of like just flow and just see what happens, you know? And he goes, you know, I know that you really like to go with the flow, but I want to manifest some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, whoa. And I, it, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I've, I've actually spoken about this before because it was such an impactful moment for me to hear that, to hear him like, like basically telling me like, hey, don't forget about this other side of things. So that was the moment when I began to shift in the other direction. And it's been years from there that I've adopted more of my masculine energy, that I've stepped more into that space, that I've um, really allowed myself to, what, to become what I call an integrated man, you know, fully integrating both of my parts, allowing myself to recognize that I have full access to this femininity, but that the strength of my masculinity is also equally as beautiful and powerful. And in fact, when I was out of balance in my feminine, um, I couldn't really create anything. And I felt depressed. Something was not working for me because I wasn't allowing myself to be fully integrated. So coming into that space has really allowed me to activate a business and a beautiful relationship and all the different pieces and let those things come together. And of course, like we talk about balance or um, I'm not sure what word you used earlier, but balance is a dance. Like I used to imagine balance is like the still point, still point in the middle, right? Well, my beloved says, well, wait a minute. No, like, have you ever tried to balance on anything? It's a constant, it's constant motion actually yes. to make yes. sure that the balance stays. And that's what I believe is in my own world. I'm not really trying to find balance. I'm just trying to maintain integration. So I'm actually moving uh, throughout the whole spectrum of masculine feminine energy, given the situation or the whatever's happening around me, you know, yeah. uh, having full access to that, I think, is the full integration piece. Yeah. And if you really look at the, the example of, uh, of that pendulum, if you look at the pendulum very closely, it may appear to be still, but in reality, it's still jiggling a little bit. It's still mm -hmm. vibrating somewhat. Mm -hmm. There's always some natural movement that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when you were talking about that balance and, and the dance, you, mm -hmm. it just an image popped into my head about planets oftentimes and, and just solar systems that, you know, the sun may appear to be at the center of the solar system, but in fact, there's another point. Just off to the side, mm -hmm. everything is actually in a dance, rotating around that particular center as it's you know, traveling through the universe. Mm -hmm. There's always that that integration, that struggle to trying to keep that that equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's what a beautiful image. Yes. So was was. You becoming an integrated man, uh, a lot of trial and error? Did you take a class? Like, how, how did that come to fruition? No, uh, I mean, yeah, hell yeah, all those things. Yeah, yeah <laughs> there's trial and error. And yeah, I took classes. <laughs> you know, like, um, I went to all kinds of different things. Um, I'm, I'm uh, always active and learning and growing and constantly taking new things to learn. So absolutely, yeah, I took, I, I, you know, I got involved with the Mankind Project for a while. Um, my men's group, the men in my life that I connected with and really learning from them and learning together. Um, and a, a good friend of mine, you know, later down that pathway also pointed out kind of that discrepancy within me, you know, kind of recognizing that like, hey, you know, masculine energy is actually beautiful and healthy too, right? 
<clears throat> and I was like, oh yeah, you know, cause, cause I was still in that place where toxic masculinity is a thing, <clears throat> which is getting thrown around a lot right now. Um, which has me nervous because, uh, making those two things too close together all the time. Like the only time you hear about masculinity is to hear the word toxic before it yeah. suddenly masculinity gets kind of, uh, colored with that word. And that's, that is the concern of where we are right now. Like it could be that after a short period of time, we just keep going to this place where any expression of masculine quality is deemed toxic. And that's, that in and of itself is toxic. That is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And that is not going to lead to a healthy or fruitful environment. We're going to, we might swing, like you say, the pendulum has been the theme for this whole talk. <laughs> we swing that pendulum to the other side and we're going to be fraught with um, not the same, but similar challenges that we're facing now. It's just going to look a lot different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let's tackle that right now because I've heard that term. And I'm sure we've used the term toxic masculinity before. And it's never been my intention that that means masculinity is toxic, but sure. it's just in, in extreme. So you, mm. you, you, can have to, you can have toxic Doritos, like too many Doritos, they're toxic for you, right? Right. Uh, if you have one, great, go for it, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so anytime we are using that term on this show, we are not saying that masculinity is toxic. Mm -hmm. It can just be, again, back to the pendulum. At one extreme, at, at, at either end, it's toxic. Mm -hmm. There can yeah. be toxic femininity. Exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. Never heard, that. <laughs> Never heard it, but it, it's a thing, it you know, yeah. um, you know, and th another thing that I, I actually wish we didn't call it toxic because, um, I want to invite that we can, that any person that has been exhibiting or living in that space, it's probably because it's all they know. That's what they were indoctrined in. That's what they were raised to think is the way to be. And so calling it toxic still makes it like over there. Um, there's something about wanting to call it like immature, immature masculinity or unhealthy masculinity, something that invites the fact that we can actually invite those people who are exhibiting that behavior to make a change in their own lives and step more fully into the mature masculine energy, mm -hmm. hopefully, right. you know, yeah. but as long as things are toxic or way over there, it's harder to reach out to actually bring it into with a compassionate heart to actually create healing and to create another experience. Yeah. I mean, Appy and I were discussing this pre-show that, you know, I've always, the calling it toxic or the immature level, whatever, whatever wording we want to use to be mm -hmm. that it's, it's, I find it's always someone in fear. Mm -hmm. So the more totally. fearful they are, the more to an extreme they often uh. act and exhibit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, yeah. the invitation into the whole, into realizing, oh, by the way, sir, you're an integrated human being. You, mm -hmm. you, you are feminine and masculine. Would, you, would yeah. you like to experience that perhaps? Yeah. I really like that actually saying that that is an, an example of fear, like being out there, um, our, our willingness to drop into our hearts. Yeah. It's scary, you know, and, and it is fear. It's like, I'm, I don't know how to be with that. Like for a lot of men, it's like, I don't know how to be with that part of myself. I don't know how to drop into that place. I wasn't taught that. And that's one of the questions that's been coming up in a lot of the communities that I'm a part of where do men go to learn how to be this? And there's not a lot of answers to that question, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so the fear of letting ourselves bear our hearts and letting ourselves be seen and the fear of ridicule from other, you know, un immature masculine men. Um, there's a lot of fear that goes into that, you know, and it, and it does take a lot of courage in that time, in this time for men to drop into that place. Um, but I actually have a feeling that more and more, the, the mechanisms for helping men come in, into a new direction is actually going to be available um, more and more given oh, yeah. the movement, given the Me Too, given all the stuff. You know, there's, there's going to become a lot more availability for men to learn to just express themselves more authentically, more completely. Right. Totally agree. Right. For sure. yeah. So Lori had a comment here in the, in the chat. Um, Hi, Lori. The concern being that most toxic, again, you know, toxic, loosely used, aren't open to shift. So I'd love They're, to hear your thoughts on, on, on that. That's assumptive. <clears throat> that's very assumptive. Um, we don't know. We don't know if they're open to shift. I don't know if anybody's ever asked them in a truly vulnerable kind of open space, Are you do you realize 
the magnitude of, of your actions? Do you really realize what the result is of, of you being this way? You know, and maybe there is a huge amount of them that aren't willing, right? But we should still be offering them the opportunity to if we really want them to change. Right. If and we say, as- well, they're not willing to and we just shut the door, then nothing's going to change. And it's sure. opening that door to change isn't going to come from, you're toxic! Right. right. You can't, you know, exactly. you can't out toxify them in right. that place of agreement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The whole so you, to- I wanna, you, you mentioned Sean Patrick involvement in the Mankind Project earlier. Mm-hmm. Did, yeah. did, you, did you do the New Warrior training weekend that they do? I did. Yeah, yeah I did. And I, I found it to be tremendously valuable. And um, I also did a couple other trainings with them and had a men's group for a while that was kind of centered around that philosophy. Uh, I found a lot of value in it for myself. And I also recognized where I didn't fully align with their process. Um, But I think one of the great things that they do is really merging uh, the masculine and feminine qualities. Like they really allow uh, men to express intensely as men and vulnerably and softly as men as well. Like they, they do an interesting merging of those two things, which I think is tremendously valuable for, for, for men. Cool. Cause I, I've, I've gone through that weekend and I've staffed one so far myself nice. and, and what you said, Oh, we're, there aren't many places. So I wanted to make sure if that was true for you. Cause I, I felt that was a place that, that men can go. And, you know, I was, I've witnessed men of all various types and stereotypes to, to me yes. come together <laughs> and rock that experience and have a, transformational integrative experience for themselves so absolutely absolutely i know the the weekend that i went to it was a wide variety of people and ways of being and some people that i would definitely put in like the category of not open to sharing and and yet by the end of the weekend there they are they want it was like they want to they 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 have this desire to they just don't have a space to so i'm very grateful to the mankind project and all the work that they've been doing for what 30 30 plus years doing this. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Yeah. And we've talked about awareness. So even even right when I was not aware of it, I had a heart yearning to be felt, mm. to be seen and experienced. And the harder I tried to deny that, the shittier my life was. <laughs> so again, again, we come back to awareness often, but yeah, everyone can do it. And, you know, even that you know, seeing the man that resists it all, yet somehow go volunteer pay to go to a weekend that's going to challenge him and poke all of his wounds and try to rip his freaking soul open so that <laughs> change might be possible. Um, yeah. You know, something led him there and it wasn't his brain. Or right. his neck either. Yeah, <laughs> that. exactly. We're often accused of that's what's leading us. That's our main organ. And, yes. yes. So. You know, one of funny. the accusations. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's funny because I haven't been to to the that weekend yet, but from all the conversations that I've had with folks who have participated in the weekend, it's like it, the the way I would sum it up, based as an outside observer, would be it, rather than them ripping everything open, it's like here are the tools. Now rip it open yourself. Let's see if how well you can do this. That's actually well said. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, it's it's amazing what when you're given the right tools, what 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 men will do. Yep. Absolutely. And then even the uh, the positive side of masculinity can show up there, uh, because I um I felt rather evolved and along my path when I went to my weekend. So I volunteered to do things first, and uh, and I got my guts ripped out, and it was more impactful than I ever realized. But guys that were like in my group and friends, they're like. When you went first and did all that, like, like, damn, now I got to top that somehow. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. the competition kicks in in a beneficial way. Then. In a good way. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you can like, celebrate it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, okay, back to the theme. So there's a way to celebrate and own your masculinity. You can, you know, the competitive drives can, you know, can push you to become more integrated. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome oh. you know one of the things that one of the themes that has popped up during our conversation tonight is that theme of labels um how can we let go of the labels and perhaps use more descriptive terms if you will in order to help facilitate the conversation great question great question um i have no answer for that one 
We yeah. are we are labeling. We are label makers. We're like walking, talking label makers. <laughs> yeah. And it helps us find community. It helps us find home. It helps us find comfort and safety. Um, I was actually talking to one of my clients about this very thing today. He was talking about the labels in his community. And I was asking, like, do those labels actually help to solidify community as a whole? Or do they actually continue to segregate and create separation? And um, one of the labels that I would love to explore a new language around is masculine and feminine. That's one of the ones that I would love to find a different, a different language for yin yang mm. something. Um, and, and yet it's challenging. You know, um, the only reason I, I say that is because I would love to pull that masculine means man, and feminine means woman. What we're seeing so much, you know, in, in identity politics and things like right now is, is that people can express a whole spectrum just because I have certain genitalia doesn't mean I, I need to dress or be a certain way or whatever. You know, we can choose how we express or who we be in every, any given time. So that, that question right there is really challenging because mm-hmm. at the same time, um, we want to make everything equal. I also uh, shy away from the idea of making everything the same. Yes. So yes. I think polarity is beautiful and powerful and, and generative when we can respect all ends and expressions of that polarity. Yeah. Even equal. for ourselves to, to allow your, uh, like labels are fine for organizing, identifying, Oh, there, that uh, this is a safe spot for me. I can hang out in this label. But mm-hmm. the problem, again, in my experience, is when I think I'm the label mm. and there's only one label for me. Right. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. But when we can, again, talk about the spectrum, if mm-hmm. I can go up and down the slide of this label to that label freely and just for fun and to feel things out, then yeah. labels are fantastic, right? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> or or like better, better, better yet, you know, um, what what seems to be to be really resonating with me right now is mo- shifting from the word label to more descriptive, you know, d- dis- descriptive wording instead. Um, be able to use things from, in in a way that's like, well, this is this is descriptive of this situation right now, or this is descriptive of, of me right now. And rather mm-hmm. than having it be a label, which you know, my mom when I was growing up, she would always say, well, you know what you can do with a label, right? I'm like, what? You can lick it and stick it, or you can throw it away. Nice, awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was a great lesson that really, you know, that really, no pun intended, stuck with me for for most of my life. And and you know, I could we could take what's given to us mm. and either make it our own or, or truly transform it and make it our own. Mm. Um, so so maybe maybe the the shift can can start with really quite literally the shift of how we uh, of the language that we actually use i mean granted language is limited to our culture how, um our uh, you know so so many things mm-hmm. and, you know we try to construct things with 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 language which mm-hmm. can be so limiting and yet at the same time if we let go of even the thought of it being limiting it can be truly expansive as well mm-hmm. nice I like, I like that piece about the labels and mm-hmm. we can choose to take it on or not. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of this book I just read about mindset. And it was talking about fixed or growth mindsets and um, it's a book by Carol Dweck called Mindset. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, you know, that was what I was hearing and what you were saying. Like some of us, when we get a label, it's like, oh, I'm this, I'm this forever. I have to be this forever or mm-hmm. now I'm stuck in this forever, right? Yeah. Which is like the fixed mindset. Whereas the growth is like, well, this is what I was when I was then, and this is what I am now, if we need labels to define us, and mm-hmm. this is what I'm moving towards, and I can move freely within those if I want to. I can choose every day who I be by how I show up, by how I choose to be in the world. Yeah, yeah. So, so the label can be expansive, or it can, it can be a box, mm-hmm. or it can be the entire freaking universe. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it brings us back to, you know, head and heart. The Mm -hmm. head, the brain, Mm -hmm. rigid labels and definitions and boxes. The heart, Mm -hmm. it's it's more nebulous. So I feel this way now. No, I feel that way. And uh, and again, that's traditional masculinity. 
No, you make up your mind. Do one thing. See what you're going to do and do it, right? But no, right. I want to flow and be free. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that ability to, to travel back and forth. When, yeah. I, I, I don't think you're – correct me if I'm wrong. You're not saying you know, human beings should live only in their heart 100% of the time. Right. Right. There, right. there are some times when logic and analysis are what's Absolutely. The moment. Absolutely. It's, it's all about when is the right time to do this thing. And I've had some friends, you know, kind of reflect that to me, some of them in my, my men's group, and I'm really deep in this exploration. And they're like, you seem to be angry or like, not angry, but, you know, judgmental of, of using the head. I'm like, well, it's not, you know, at those points, I was really going into these areas to really learn and get, get the gold, you know. And so maybe at that time, I was living a little too in that heart, in that flow space. But no, absolutely, absolutely it's, it's about the merging of these parts. It's about bringing them together. And which one is right for which, which piece and which one is serving us at the right time, you know, visioning and bringing up the vision for what we want to create. It's a very heart centered thing. Like if I could let go of all my how and why and the fears, what would I create in the world? That's a very heart centered place. Now that I have the vision, well, what steps do I need to take to get there? That's a very head centered thing, you know, and it's like, we have to figure out a strategy to actually act, enact that in the world. And yet we don't want that strategy to veer off the path of what feels good in our hearts. Like that's where we're actually like bringing them together. And can we actually move in a seamless flow and not like, Oh, I'm in my heart now and I'm in my head now, but maybe, maybe we're just bringing them together and flowing, you know, in that space. Yeah. That into being, being fully integrated again mm -hmm. Yeah, and not, not labeling the ego or getting mad at the ego or anything, but honoring the ego and honoring totally purpose that it serves absolutely yeah absolutely. Cool. i do want to be before we wrap this up i i, I want to acknowledge and bring up something that was shared in the chat mm -hmm. Lori saying that earlier she was chatting on facebook with someone that said women really want men to be like trump and that when we realize it when women realize it they'll be much better off for it and by trump he was meaning men in charge and taking control and you know that we've hit it and we've called it the fixed mindset and someone operating from fear and you know my way is the best way and when you realize it you'll be happier yep yeah. and assume and assuming everything <laughs> when you're supposed to be assuming nothing um and you know projecting that across everybody yeah. saying that the best thing for now you know that person may be absolutely right for some people like for some people it might actually really serve them to have a man that just takes full control and she can just sit back and, and be receptive like that's her genius zone but to say that's right for everybody that's that's the challenge here like and all some, the things are beautiful and some women in their own fixed mindset or living in fear may say yes you're right i'm helpless take care of me man sure and yeah and just be, mm -hmm. because that's what they were taught and uh, mm -hmm. society continues to reinforce so mm -hmm. yeah again it's if we could just get everyone dancing Right? right. Just <laughs> dance. I love dance. <laughs> I do too. You know, one of my favorite things is watching movies of those those grand ballrooms and people actually doing a real ballroom dance. Mm -hmm. Not modern ballroom dance. You know, people just swirling and twirling all over that dance floor. And it is so amazing to watch how they don't bump into each other. Mm -hmm. It is so amazing. Yeah. And, and so in that dance, the man is leading, but if the man's alone and forcing it, that's not a, a, not a, a smooth flowing, attractive looking dance, is it? Mm -hmm. It's right. cooperative. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It is a, it is a conversation, communication. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Love that. So, so Sean Patrick, what's the best way for people to, to find you, to connect with you? Yeah, my website is the best way. Um, SeanPatrickMar.com, and uh, you know if if what I've been speaking to today resonates for anyone in the audience, um, I offer a powerful conversation to come talk to me, where we spend some time getting clear on what is your vision, what are you creating, you know, and how can I support that? And I give you everything I have in those conversations, and it's is all that, free. Is that like this? Like you broadcast it to the world? These conversations? It's not. It, it's not broadcast to the world. That's all private. So anything you share is totally confidential. Although I often record them so that my clients can go back and check. Um, but yeah, it's, it's my form of service. You know, I really love serving in this way. It's to, to hold space, to listen, and to share insight are the gifts that I feel like I really have in this world. And so I love being able to offer that to people who want to receive that. 
Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you in, in all of your integrated power uh, for, for every interaction I've had with you has, uh, has, has brought me gifts as well. Mm. Uh, so I want to honor and, and call that out and, uh, and thank you for that. Um, I've had a, uh, I thought this was a fantastic conversation. We've touched a lot of different topics along the way. Yeah. Imagine that. Uh, so, uh, Apio, is anything uh, a standout that, that you feel needs to be addressed still around uh, masculine power and, and celebrating and owning it? Truthfully, I think that it was a beautiful, free-flowing, well-directed, and fully integrated conversation. I think it covered <laughs> all of the important things that needed to be covered and that really felt right to 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 cover for yeah. sure uh, that makes me want to get like a play buzzword bingo for real men feel we need to like integrate it <laughs> 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 the uh, oh. the at-home game version of the show <laughs> exactly hey you know we need to add it to our list of, of, of things uh, <laughs> the it? buzzword bingo <laughs> Yeah, and I, I also want to just uh, thank you both for hosting this, for creating this this platform uh, to, to be able to bring these messages into the community and do this part of the work, you know, real men feel. It's so true, and I'm really honored to be a part of this and getting the opportunity to be here and the process of getting here. So thank you so much for, you know, just showing up, being your word, and being such wonderful hosts. Uh, it's wonderful to be here and to communicate with you and allowing it to flow in that way within the container and the structure feels really beautiful. And uh, thank you, Lori, for your insight and input as well. Thumbs up, Lori, at least. Yeah, hey. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate you. Thank you for everyone for being here, joining us live. Thanks for listening wherever you're finding us. Uh, thank you, Sean Patrick. Thank you, Apio. And uh, I, I want to remember that uh, everyone, wherever you are, you can show your love and support for Real Men Feel by uh, buying some stuff. Everyone loves stuff, so we've got some stuff for sale at realmenfield.org slash swag. Uh, maybe we'll get a buzzword bingo game up there soon, but uh, <laughs> different, uh, necklaces, t-shirts, sweatshirts, all in the Real Men Feel theme. And you can also give us a digital tip. We have uh, got an account at digitaltipjar.com slash realmenfeel. And you can just go in there and select some amount that like, hey, thanks, that was a cool show, or here's some money, go away, I don't want to see you ever again. Uh, it can be a tip or a payoff. I don't care. Um, you can even show some love for us by text. You can text Real Men Feel to 504-226-5306. And you'll receive a link back via text to confirm how much you want to tip. So uh, I think that's really freaking cool. I just discovered this a couple weeks ago. Nice. So uh, that's when you're allowed to be on your phone when you listen to the show when you're text tipping us, okay? <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So thanks again for everyone. Thank you, John Patrick. Uh, let us know your adventures, where you land next, what you're up to. Glad to have you back anytime. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I look forward to that. Awesome. And uh, again, Apio, thank you for being here as well. Of course. I always love being here. Beauty. And uh, until next time, keep feeling. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Until next week, visit realmenfeel.org or the Real Men Feel Facebook group and share what you thought of this episode. Please give this podcast a review on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel. Reach out to us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Show us some love by visiting realmenfeel.org slash swag or digitaltipjar.com slash realmenfeel. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com and Apio Hunter at apiohunter.com. <laughs>